Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Autodesk Virtual Academy. I said good morning, but I know I see several of you on the list on the East Coast and other parts of the world, so I thank everyone for joining us again. We have a, um, a couple of, of guests presenting with me today. Uh, to my left, I have Chris Coletti with Autodesk. I also have Mike Carlson, many of you may know in the list, um, of many, of many of the customers I see here work with Mike typically on Vault, Vault implementations. He's a project manager with Katib. I also have a special guest from Autodesk who's a product marketing manager for both Vault and uh, the PLM 360 product line from Autodesk, Tyler Beck. And Tyler will be presenting copy design today. This is an exciting topic for me as I look at our customers that have product design suite and many of you on the session today. Uh, one, of the, one of the things we notice at Katib is we notice Vault tends to be one of the most underutilized tools in the suite. Uh, and, and today we wanted to share with you one of the biggest benefits that you get with the Vault. Again, all of you and the majority of you I see here have Vault as part of product design suite. On average, we see customers who implement just the Vault basic inside of the suite save roughly ten dollars to $15,000 per engineer per year. And uh, today we're going to highlight one of the features that gives you savings in terms of time and efficiency and the ability to reuse a design as a foundation for a future design. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Tyler. Enjoy the session and we'll catch up at the end with a Q&A where we'll answer all the questions on the, the product, the, uh, the tools Tyler showed today. And also, I'd love to hear from anybody with questions on what's held you up from installing Vault in the suite. So make sure you chat, uh, enter the, the questions, I'm sorry, in the question and answer session, and we'll make sure we, uh, we answer all the questions. So Tyler, I'm going to hand it over to you. Great. Thanks, Anthony. Welcome, everybody. i um, excited to uh, talk a little bit today about copy design. So um, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the presentation and show, I'm going to do a little bit of PowerPoint, of course, just to warm us up, and then we'll get started with uh, the live demonstration. Okay, so I'm Tyler Beck. Um, I'm with Autodesk, Technical Marketing Manager for uh, PLM and Vault, like Anthony mentioned. But uh, today we're going to be talking about copy design and how to just get started with it. Uh, I'm coming from industry. I'm a mechanical engineer. And while working as a CAD administrator, I had a lot of powerful users with Inventor, SolidWorks, and other CAD tools, but they didn't always take the time to, to leverage the existing data management solution like Vault. And they didn't uh, take the time to, to use some of the, the more basic tools. So let's talk about copy design and, and how it can help your, your engineers and your designers in your organization, how it can help you just speed up and get faster. So the goals for today, um, like I was saying, was we want to do an introduction to copy design. We want to talk about what are just the benefits, who should be using it, and how. And then we'll talk about going through using the tool. And then the overall goal is just to spend more time on innovation, on design, and to be able to reuse past project knowledge and product project data, and just avoid any mistakes that come along with doing a manual process. All right, so my first story is from when I was in college. Um, I was working in an office, and I walked by, and this, uh, this gal was working in Excel. She was a, a great contributor to the team, worked really hard, but I saw on her screen that she was doing this. She was clicking through manually in Excel, and my head just exploded, right? I, I just couldn't help myself. I said, no, there's this really great patterning functionality in Excel. It's really easy. And I showed her how to do it. And you know, it was a week goes by and I walk by and I just happened to catch that she was doing this again manually. And she would do hundreds and hundreds of rows. And I think this is the equivalent of what we're doing with our engineering design data when we don't leverage tools like copy design. So let's, uh, let's take a look. So let's do a really high level overview um, since it's a webinar, let's start with something kind of fun, which uh, I've got a lightsaber here. I know it's, uh, it's a little late uh, since that was released in December, but uh, the story is still, we've got 
a design, right? We've got an assembly and we're working in Inventor and we want to leverage the, all of the parts that are part of this assembly. So you could use web clients where you could view and visualize these files faster and then make suggested edits. Now, let's say that you want to start with an existing project. So we might start from our past release cycle, but then start a brand new design with copy design. We can give it a brand new name. We can start a whole new assembly structure, being sure to grab all the additional files. Okay, so let's look at it from an overview. So when you have large assemblies like industrial machine, these can consist of thousands and thousands of components. And so with Vault, you can grab assemblies, your parts, your drawings, and your supporting documents, and you can bring those in. So this is the, the new copy design interface. And as you can see, it's going to give you a visual layout of all the structure you're going to have and all the different components. You can replace components and you can choose that from your existing vault structure with all of your existing data. So let's do a 60 second kind of in-depth look at the tool and then we'll, uh, then we'll, we'll start talking about uh, kind of the nuts and bolts of the actual solution. So I start by working in Vault Professional and I'll do a copy design. So in starting the copy design, um, you can configure your copy design as you like. So you can add additional properties like description or maybe a thumbnail so that you can, you can visualize across the assembly. And then you have um, easy to use buttons as well as on the far right, we have these panels that allow you to, to visualize and view different parts of the data. We can copy to a brand new folder along with we can set different prefix or suffix values and we can even put in custom uh, numbering schemes and, and auto naming essentially. So you can see that with just drag drop along with you can stretch uh, the pane to, to view what you need to see and then with this replace functionality you can select from existing components and, and choose to swap those in. So we haven't even really opened up the design tool yet. We're just getting everything kind of prepackaged and pre-built. So who, who could benefit from this and, and how and why? So let's look at a couple different parts of your organization that might use it and maybe use it in slightly different ways. So one is with new concepts and R&D. So all you really want to do is, is conceptualize and, and design fast and on the fly and, and, and get a feel for something that you're working on, you could make a copy of an existing released design from your past um, from legacy projects and you could go off of that and copy that into a new folder and just work on it without uh, having any concern about affecting any production um, content and can production assemblies that are, are out in use. Then let's talk about new bids, proposals, that type of thing. That's, that's a data reuse um, story there as well, where maybe you want to use a, an existing project that you sold or a contract you executed on a year ago. So you could grab that entire bid or that entire project with all of its supporting documents, all of its um, additional CAD files as well. And you could copy that into a new bid proposal and then make, again, make changes to that um, as needed. So you could essentially get the whole project started. And then new products, right? So you, you essentially want to change maybe a sub-assembly that's in use across several of your, your major designs. So you could start with copy design to to make this, this editing process a little easier, a little better. Okay, so here's a visual of that. So say you're, you know, you're working in engineering and you're gonna reuse 75% roughly, right, of, of what, you're gonna, what you're gonna be working on, or maybe it's just 20%. So a faster way to do this is to start with copy design, but essentially grab an entire copy of the assembly and then start editing and working from there. 
So you want to avoid doing this manually. It's going to be slower if you do it manually. And some of the components that you're getting started with, you know you don't need. You may not need an entire subassembly. Get rid of it. Or you need to immediately replace it with um, some major components. Or you want to uh, replace, you know, for example, the wheel set or immediately off the bat. You could do that. Okay. So what are some of the, the basic commands and functionality with copy design? So you're going to have the, these panels here so you can understand the folder structure that it's going to go into. You can see where it's being copied to. You can understand the actions. Numbering, yeah, another way to think of that maybe is naming, right? So with uh, numbering, you can choose uh, different methods of auto naming or just doing it kind of on the fly manually within this, uh, within this panel. And then where you use, you can still understand um, what assemblies reference this, this particular subassembly you might be working on, as well as parents and children relationships. So some of the verbiage, some of the, some of the commands to just kind of wrap your head around. Copy is kind of as, as it sounds, you're, you're taking an existing file and you're creating a, a new one. You're copying it and, get, and giving it a new name or giving it the same name, but putting it in a different folder structure. Copy branch is essentially just copying everything and all of its dependents. Then copy two is just more about location. So I'm taking this existing file and I wanna, I wanna make a new one and I wanna put it somewhere new or I wanna put it into a different folder set. Maybe an example might be bids, right? If you're gonna bid to Acme Yogurt, you could uh, copy everything into a new bid folder if, if that's how you've laid out your structure. Exclude, you're allowed to remove and exclude components as, as you're building this out. So remove and replace. So removes, um, just like it sounds, you can remove existing uh, file sets and, and remove that from the structure. And then replace um, is, is a handy tool for Basically, before you even open up the design files, uh, you can create a copy and then you can choose to put in new subassemblies or parts or, or existing subassemblies and parts in place of something else. All right, so let's, uh, let's look at Vault Professional. So I'll begin there. And I have this discharge assembly that I'm working with. And what I want to do is I maybe want to take this design and uh, let's first talk about maybe R&D, they want to work on a new concept. And so they don't want to mess with any of the existing production designs, anything that's been released, anything that engineering actually might be working on on a current project or contract. They don't want to touch any of that, but they want to, they want to use that existing data. So what they'll do is start a copy design. And what this does is copy design uh, starts this separate application, but you have two options with copy design. By doing a right click and choosing copy design, I've essentially chosen to, to run it uh, in sync with my Vault Professional. Now another way you can do that is to go to your program menu and launch copy design and that will run it as an executable separate from your vault professional. So one benefit of working that way is you're not gonna tie up your own vault professional. Right now, I can't really do anything in vault pro because I'm in copy design. So if I'd like to do that, I could just launch copy design from my programs menu and work separately. That way I could still um, utilize vault pro. This is still kind of the easier preferred way to work is just launch it from vault professional. Okay. So let's first talk about the menus. So when I first opens up, I can get a feel for our, our upper level buttons here. We've got a refresh. We can see drawings and additional references. This is also where I can choose which panels on the far right are gonna be utilized. By default, I've got everything selected so that I can quickly go through my panels on the far right. Adding existing objects. This was new 
when we launched the new copy design for 2015 uh, R2, 2016, now 2017 releases, you can also work with additional data sets. So you might grab from one existing assembly structure and then go to another uh, data set and, and grab something from there as well and, and create all of that at once into one copy. Okay, this is our copy button. This is basically the execute command. So we have the assembly structure laid out. We have the states and revisions. I'd like to see the thumbnail. So I'll choose a new column. And I'll add it in. And that, of course, is editable where you'd like it to, to, to sit. So I can get my visuals of what assemblies I'm working with, what subparts and components. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is let's just start with something really simple for um, R&D. What I want to do is create a copy. So you can see it's doing copy of, so it's taking the existing number scheme or name and adding a prefix to it, which just happens to be copy of. So maybe that's not going to work for R&D and we can change that or maybe for a bid it's different. But let's, uh, let's see where this is going. So it's just going to my, my root folder, to my, my data folder. What I'd like to do is copy it to maybe a new folder that's its own. So I'll put it into research and development. Okay, so you can see it succeeded, successfully copied, and it's copied just this assembly into that, that folder. So let's start looking through what are the, what are the options? What are, what are some of the things I might need to get done? All right, so let's say that uh, we're doing a bid and the sales engineer would like to take this existing project and we're gonna, we're gonna make, um, he's expecting a lot of minor modifications, but this is gonna get us 60% of the way. So um, we could work on copying this into maybe a new bid folder. Let's look at the actions. So what's being copied? This is the only thing that's actually getting a new file created. Anything being reused? Yes, everything underneath it essentially is just gonna, these exact same files and where they rest in their file structure will be utilized. So it's just basically grabbing the reference is all it's doing. So maybe in this case, if we wanted to use um, all new files, we wanna essentially start a whole new folder structure. Maybe that's a better use for R&D. They wanna just copy everything off into one folder that's separate, and then they're gonna sort out their references later. Now for buyout parts, it would be wise not to copy those probably but, or excuse me, to, to change them, but just use the existing released. But let's, let's just go through the exercise. So I could choose all of it. I could do the branch. I could copy all. So you can see it's creating these. It's copying all of them. And where is it putting them? So it's putting them in the root folder. I can see it in the list view on where these files are gonna be placed. Now, copy of is not acceptable, that's, that's the wrong thing. So let's set our values for the prefix. And maybe this is research. So you can see I just changed the prefix on one of them. And what I'd like to do is maybe from now on, like uh, I, I'd like a, an existing prefix to be always added instead. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's just reuse everything. Let's set our prefix. And instead of copy of, let's say that we're doing a, a standard number series for all of our existing prefixes, it's gonna be a 120 dash. So that will always be added to the naming scheme going forward. So now let's do a copy. You can see the 120 dash is now my new default 
going forward. And if I'd like to do all of them, I can copy them. And I could copy two. So if I choose the existing folder that I'd like it to rest in, I could set this 120 assembly and all of these existing copies are going to go to this folder. And what I'd like to do, I'd probably need to do is refresh that and then we, we could run the copy command. Okay, let me check time. Okay, let's start doing some, some review of copy design. So for replace, again, what I want to do is select any existing components. So for example, this subassembly, I could choose to replace, and then it's going to allow me to browse through my vault, and I can search for an existing file or uh, existing assembly that I might want to replace it, and that will create that in the new copy uh, file set within the Vault Professional. Okay, so let's go back to Vault Pro. So I have this new research in the R&D. I can see the new copy assembly that we had created earlier. And all that was was one existing file, and that is, is added to, to the structure. We could then open this with an inventor and then start removing and, and cutting out components and parts and assemblies that we might not need uh, in the existing structure. OK, so um, let's talk about the interface real quick. Um, we've got a few minutes left. So 2015 R2, 2016, and 17 is this new user experience, the new UI for updated copy design. And it's, it's available in work group and professional. Now, we had copy design previous to this, and you could use that in 2015 and before. And there's a terrific uh, video and training session that was done by Kativ um, on copy design. I'll, I'll show that in just a second. And it was done by Javier. And check out that video. It does a nice kind of side-by-side -side comparison of our older interface, if you've used it, to the new interface. Now, this was just meant to be an introduction to copy design and talking about maybe some different ways that you might uh, use this tool. Now, I've done a comprehensive write-up on copy design, starting from the 101 all the way up to leveraging items, doing a, um, <clears throat> a reuse of, of new concepts, um, but basically a circular reference for copy design, and, and getting into some of the advanced, advanced functionality as well. So check out that article. It's got a series of, of write-ups along with some of our existing videos going through copy design. Okay, so we talked about just the basics of using copy design and how it's gonna save you some time. And then talked about some of the other resources out there that you can, you can start looking at to learning the tool. And a big one is for you is just start. Start by doing a copy design and creating a copy and start clicking through the buttons. Click on each button, try to figure out what it does and then check out these write-ups. They're gonna give you some good explanation to the back end of, of why we've set it up a certain way and how you can best use it and, and speed up. And again, there's also some great videos out there on copy design. So let's go to the Q&A. Time for uh, any questions that might have been uh, put into the chat window on in the go to, go to webinar interface. Yeah, that was great, Tyler. Thank you for the presentation. Again, it's it's um, the last time, and some of you on the line, I know Vincent, and I see a couple others that uh, we learned Inventor together when it first came out. And I can remember using tools like Design Assistant. Uh, and thinking back at Design Assistant, I can't imagine anyone not using what's involved today. So uh, that looked great. We have several questions that came in between Mike and Tyler. We're going to get to all the questions. I'll go ahead and read these off, Tyler. And uh, right. if you or Mike want to go ahead and, and answer the question, that would be great. So the first question I have, uh, maybe you can take this, Tyler, is with Vault, can I run copy design while working in Vault Explorer? 
Yeah, so I kind of mentioned that um, for, for running it separate, uh, you, you want to do the executable. So just go to your program menu, your program files, and find copy design there. Then you can run it separately. That was one of our performance enhancements was it's essentially running it on the server, the, the actual um, copy creation. So if you have a massive file set that you're copying, that's, that's a, a nice time savings is it's not running on your local machine necessarily. It's getting copied and created on your server as well as it can be a separate. Uh, executable. Okay, cool. And maybe Mike, you can you can answer this one. Radu on the line asked. He actually asked if we were going to show uh, a AutoCAD data set. Uh, but Mike, why don't you talk a little bit about how Vault handles AutoCAD, uh, and maybe you can follow up with Radu. Yeah, I, I can definitely follow up with Radu. We talk all the time, but um, the uh, you know so Vault, yeah, with AutoCAD. Right, it understands just like Inventor, it really has a parent-child relationship with the parts and assemblies. AutoCAD has that same relationship with X references, so um, it, it'll be able to pick up those references at that point. Okay, cool. Uh, and the next question, Mike, maybe you can take uh, answer this one. Is uh, the questions is copy design only in the Vault professional package? Yeah, and I think you saw Tyler's slide close to the end here is the, the, co the copy design that Tyler was showing, and there's also another question related to this, so I'll answer it kind of two here. Um, the copy design that was being showed here is only available in work group and professional, uh, 2016 Vault and 2015 R2. Uh, so the old Vault, or I shouldn't say the old Vault, the Vault Basic has the same way that you've always done copy design since I think Vault came out. Uh, that same copy design feature still exists in Vault Basic. So again, this new kind of an improved version is in Workgroup and Pro. Great. And then there's another question. Maybe you can take this one, Tyler. It's uh, can we use the replace option in copy design for AutoCAD with a DWG XREF? Oh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, that's my understanding that it, it works. It works well with with AutoCAD and the XREF. I'd want to confirm that though. Mike, have you have you used that one with with AutoCAD? The replace, I ha I haven't done that, but uh, Radu, you and I can we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. yeah, and what we'll do is when we find the answer, we'll post it uh, on our blog, everyone, so you everyone can see the answer to that, and maybe we can even you know write a little tip on how that all works. Uh, but that's a good question. There was a question from Raymond about copy design losing some parametric descriptions. Again, uh, Mike and and I and Raymond were chatting back and forth during the session. So Raymond, we'll we'll follow up with you on that question via phone. This way we get a clear understanding and, and can help you with that. So here's a last question. One more just came in. What is the best way to use copy design when files have iLogic code in them? Tyler or Mike, one of you want to take that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, with using iLogic, um, there's actually a great write-up on that one um, and using intelligent parts. So um, yeah, I'm going to refer you back to that article because it's um, uh, Alan O'Leary, our product manager, did a nice job kind of um, mapping that out. It's it's one of those uh, interesting longer topics for sure. Great. Maybe, yeah, Tyler, it would be great if you could send it over to us. We'll post yep. that on our blog follow up that, so that everyone can see that, that right up. That. A couple things I want everyone to know, especially for those of you that are not uh, not familiar or have not yet implemented Vault. Um, again, Vault is included in, in all the products with subscription. And Mike Carlson um, has written a do-it-yourself Vault installation guide. Uh, we're going to post that on our blog soon. Take a look at that. Make sure you follow our blog and our Facebook page. Uh, and, and again, whether you, you get us to help you or you use Mike's do-it-yourself guide, I highly recommend everyone even if it's simply for the copy design feature, everyone start using Vault and take advantage of what Tyler showed. Tyler, I want to thank you again for the presentation. Thank everyone for joining again. Next week, we will have a session on what's new in AutoCAD. Again, AutoCAD is included in all of the suites. So everyone I see here has some suites and, and uh, I'm sure will benefit from that. Fred Ortiz, our AutoCAD expert, will be presenting that. So I look forward to seeing everyone next week.
and be sure to, to join next week, invite your friends, invite others in the community. Um, that really makes uh, the Q&A and interaction from everyone uh, makes us useful for everyone. So be sure to invite your peers and colleagues and, and other coworkers to attend. We look forward to seeing you then. Thanks again, Tyler. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Chris.